Hello and welcome to our weekly walk series. Nice to meet you all. My name is Desiree. You might recognize my name from being on the back end and answering y'all's questions for the weekly walks for the past couple weeks. All right, so before we start, let me briefly introduce myself. So my name is Desiree and I have been working with the Conservancy for the past few months. I am another tour guide. Hello, nice to meet you all. Um, and yeah, um, I have a background in education and urban studies. That's my forte. And also I was born and raised in East Harlem, which is really special because our weekly walk takes place in that neighborhood. Well, it's adjacent to that neighborhood because we are gonna be focusing on the north end of the park also known as the Harlem Mirror. So that is very exciting. So again, welcome to our weekly walk series. And yeah, we're gonna get into it. Definitely feel free to chat, say where you're from, say how you're doing. We always love to hear from y'all. So as we know, the Central Park Conservancy is here to preserve and celebrate all of Central Park as a sanctuary and the pace and pressures of city life and the enjoyment and well-being of all and everyone that includes children which is going to be our main topic of discussion today of course feel free to use chat as i said before and also use the q a feature please keep that for strictly questions only if you have a question or something like that and um you will see that you can Turn off the transcribe feature on the bottom here on your settings if you would like to do so. And you'll also be able to participate in a poll a little bit later. And I will share the results with everyone once we get to that. All right, so we're just going to jump into it. I'm going to start off by giving a little bit of the background of history of the playgrounds in Central Park. So essentially, the first ever playground that was in Central Park is now called Extra Ball Field. It's a very interesting story because at first, um, Olmsted and Vox did not want a ball field there, but then they came to a consensus with the Board of Commissioners and said that you could have a ball field, um, but only boys who did well in school could actually play in that ball field. But this was actually labeled as a playground in the original Greensburg plan. And essentially, as we could see in this picture, taken in 1904, it is a playground, as in it's just a plain ground with dirt. A playground was thought of very differently than what we think of today. Playgrounds back then did not have play structures or anything like that. It was just a huge open field for kids to go run around safely. That was our first playground, um, Hexer Ball Field. And it wasn't all the way until the 1930s, um, until Robert Moses was parks commissioner, where we started getting playgrounds that we know today um, with the play structures. Um, Robert Moses was responsible for about 19 of the playgrounds that we have today. We have 21 total playgrounds in the park today. So I have a little screenshot from Google here showing us um, the red trees basically labeled where all the playgrounds are in Central Park today. So we have a total of 21. Um, it's a very big infrastructure. And of course, the Central Park Conservancy takes care, maintains, and restores all those playgrounds to make sure that it's suitable for guests all year round. All right, so this is going to be the root of our weekly walk. We really are at the end, at the edge, the north end of Central Park here. We're gonna be seeing the Dana Center, we're starting at 106th Street and 5th Avenue, and we're gonna be ending at 100th Street on the west side of the park. Um, it's a little over a mile. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. All right, so this is the beginning of our walk right at the entrance of 106th Street and 5th Avenue. This gate is nameless, but yes, I'm very familiar with this area. I grew up in this area. Um, and I really love it. It's, I hold it near and dear to my heart. So here we are at the gate. We're gonna continue down the pathway. Um, the concession stand um, has been closed for a very long time, way before COVID. Um, so yeah, we're gonna keep going. 
oh yes so slightly more down our path as we can see we have this beautiful area of benches here right and on the left, we can get a little sneak preview of the data center, which we are going to stop by later today on our weekly walk. So there is essentially a path that goes around the entire Harlem Mirror for you to walk around it. Um, and right now, we are on the east side. And we are quickly approaching our first stop, our first playground of the day, which is going to be the Bernard Family Playground. I thought it was very interesting that they have this fence detailing, um, and I really liked that. Um, so just to remind us that um, only people with children can enter the playgrounds, so just keep that in mind. If you have a child, if you're caring for a child, definitely. Um, I encourage you all to uh, explore these playgrounds, but yes, that's a New York, New York State law that only people with children can enter playgrounds, so it's not just such a rule. Yeah, and this is going to be the entrance of the playground. We can already see some place from already. Um, the Central Park Conservancy opens and closes all these playgrounds. They close around dusk, I would say. And also, this is one of the playgrounds that have been restored recently by the Conservancy. So when I grew up with this playground, it did look a little different, but we are going to check out what it looks like in a bit. And we got a closer view of those play structures. We got a couple of slides. We have a sandbox. And in the back, we have a sprinkler system that was not on, on this day, which is interesting since it was warm. But yeah, most of our playgrounds do have some type of sprinkler system, which is, I think is really fun and really great way to beat the heat, of course. And this is a picture of what the playground would have looked like in the 2010s. We could see it essentially just got a fresh coat of paint, but the structures did mostly remain the same. And this is what um, I was familiar with um, when I was growing up, actually. And this, we're fast running back to today. This is just the other side of the playground, directly behind where we were. They have this swinging area for small children. So because of the size of the playground, not that much space, and because of the swinging area that is explicitly for younger children, I would definitely say that this playground is for younger children, I would say up to five years old, um, so they don't get hurt. And also it's easier to keep an eye on them since it has a more smaller area and more enclosed area. All right, so we are continuing. We have left our first stop, the playground, and we've got this beautiful view of the Dana. Um, I think that <laughs> it's a great time actually for a poll so watch out guys we got a poll um i just want to know what's your favorite way to use the park um so we've got a lot of different options for y'all but i'm just curious to see what's your favorite way to use the park since we are looking at recreation today at all these playgrounds i'm gonna give y'all about 15 more seconds all right Let's see what we got. All right, so we have a lot of people for passive recreation. Um, and then the next most popular, we have active recreation. Um, so I really, that's very interesting to me. I would also say that my favorite thing to do in the park is a passive recreation, just walking around, definitely a pastime of mine. Um, very interesting to see. But if you are walking around with your children, definitely take them to visit one of these playgrounds. Definitely, definitely. We're gonna continue on with our walk now. Continuing down our same path, we've got another beautiful view of the Harlem Mirror. As you go around the Harlem Mirror, you'll definitely be able to take in many different views that you can see. And I just like looking at the Harlem Mirror from all these different points of views to appreciate that scenery and greenery and to do all that passive recreation that is so popular. And we are passing right now Duke Ellington Circle behind us and in front of us, we are at Pioneer's Gate. This is gonna be on 110th Street and Fifth Avenue. 
and we're just going to continue down this path. We are quickly approaching our next stop. And we just got another view of the Harlem Mirror. Um, the lake is looking a little green right now because we do have an algae bloom. So yes, the algae bloom actually does affect us and our programming a little bit, which I'm going to get into very shortly. But yeah, here we are at the Dana Center, one of our many visitor centers here around the park. Definitely come stop by. The unique thing about the Dana Center is that we have a fishing program for kids. So from five, from age five to 16, you can borrow um, a fishing, you can borrow a fishing rod and you can actually fish in the Harlem Mirror. Right now, um, programming is su suspended due to our algae bloom. But I think if you check back in a couple of weeks in the fall time, we should have that pro pro programming up and running again. So yeah, definitely stop by, get a map, um, and partake in our um, children's programming where you get to fish from age five to age 16. And we also have discovery guides in there to encourage exploration and observation for children actually. So these journals you can take for absolutely free. Um, and it's just to encourage the observations and explorations throughout the park, essentially, so they can write down anything that they observe that they see. And they are location specific. Um, but you can definitely write any observations that you have, or that your child has in any one of our journals. So definitely come stop by the Dana um, the next time you're in the north end of the park. All right, so we're going to continue quickly to our next stop because actually our next stop is right across from the Dana Center. So again, lots to see here in the Harlem Mirror. So right across from the Dana Center, we got our second playground of the day, the East 110th Street Playground. Um, it's a much bigger area. It's got a lot more play structures, definitely more friendly to our older children. So children five and up, I would say, Definitely tweens and teens love this park. And the community, just to give you a little background, the community has lots of different families, lots of different schools and organizations. Since we are right next to East Harlem, it's also pride predominantly a Spanish and black community. So there are lots of different organizations and schools that actually come to this park to play during their recreation time. So um, just keep that in mind if you're trying to have more of a chill, relaxed experience, just try not to go in those really busy times in the afternoon um, where lots of groups will actually come to play here. Um, this is another one of our playgrounds that was also restored by the Conservancy. It looked a little different. Um, so this is going to be a picture around winter in the 2010s of what it used to look like. Again, um, I did grow up with the playground looking like this. Um, I do think that the restoration was a lot more of a dramatic change for this playground than the previous one that we saw before, but we do see some similar structures of the wood climbing play structures come into play from the past one into the future one that definitely stayed there. There also used to be this huge fireman's pole, which I was actually pretty scared of to go down. So unfortunately, I never got to go down that huge fireman's pole that used to be there, but now we can appreciate this beautifully restored playground, thanks to the Central Park Conservancy. Yeah, so this is going to be the back area. We have lots of different types of swings. We have tire swings, and we have the other types of just going up and down swings. Swinging was definitely one of my favorite pastimes um, as a child to do. Um, sometimes, you know, there's lots of children that try to pile on one tire swing and things like that. Lots of fun to be had. Um, but I definitely do like the new and improved design that they have with the restoration because as we can see, they actually made the benches and the seating area blend right into the scenery so that you almost can barely notice the benches. So I definitely like that design detail and appreciate that quite a lot. And this is the view of the Harlem Mirror if you're looking directly from inside East 110th Street Playground. And you could see lots of different views of the mirror um, and lots of different points of views. All right, so we're going to exit and continue along the path to get to our next destination right here. Um, 
to know we have public bathrooms here that are open until dusk. So definitely come through. This is the side of the data center. And I saw a nice friendly cormorant, I believe a female cormorant on our walk. We actually have a couple cormorants that actually live in the Harlem here. So if you do have a chance, definitely keep an eye out for them to see if you can spot them. But um, very fun to see our wildlife thriving here in Central Park. All right, and this is going to be a view of the other side of Harlem Mirror. So actually right now we are going through some construction. Um, the Alaska Rink Pool construction. Um, and that's going to be going on until 2024. So unfortunately, we cannot use the other side of the mirror, but there's still lots of things to see here at the north end, as we're going to see today. So still come out if you can. Yes, we are going to be continuing to our next stop. We have passed the Bernard Family Playground, past the data center right here at East 110th Street Playground, and we are going to continue to our next playground. And we are going to be what looks like exiting the park, but it's only going to be for a brief time, so we could cross the road, of course. Right here, we got Farmer's Gate. So the interesting thing about the gates in Central Park is that they're not going to be named after a person or anything like that. They're actually going to be named after the populations that use the park. So before we passed Pioneer's Gate, right now we're here at Farmer's Gate. So just keep your eye out for all the gates around the park that just have different names of community or just people that are intended to use the park. Definitely the park of the people right there. And um, we do have signs on this path, just letting you know to dismount your bike because you're actually not allowed to bike on any of the pedestrian paths. And you will know it's a pedestrian path if it doesn't have any signage of roads or anything like that, because all bikes should be on the road um, in New York. Um, but you could still use this path, and I still encourage you to, because a lot of people don't know you could use it. And it's going to take us directly to our next playground. Yeah, so right here is where you would be able to exit if you had a bike to use the West Drive, of course. Biking is also one of my favorite things to do here at the park along the drive. It's a very fun time and I highly recommend it. It's also North Woods if you go towards where the arrow said, um, could also run into the North Woods there. So lots to check out here. And we're just gonna continue along our walk heading towards the west side. So we are on the same path. We're just gonna be heading towards the west side now. And we are quickly approaching our next stop which we could see already some of the play structures. All right, so we are now at the West 110th Street Playground. Um, I would say that this playground is a lot more low key in the sense that a lot of people don't know that it's there because there's actually high, high elevation on the outsides of the park. So it actually makes it hard to see that there is a playground here. Um, I have used this a couple times before. Um, we got the sprinklers right there, and I may or may not have ran through them on that very hot day that I was taking these pictures. Um, and then we got a jungle gym right behind. And I decided to actually climb that jungle gym and give us a nice bird's eye view of the park and what it would look like on top of that jungle gym. In case you were curious, of course, we've got some swings. We also got a sandbox here. Um, and a little bit of climbing structures. I am noticing that the population for this park is a lot of younger kids also. Um, I would say that this park does have a lot more space than the first one that we saw for little, little kids, but still lots of younger kids can definitely enjoy this playground as well, um, especially since we have our small swings there um, for them to enjoy. And now we just got another view of our play structure, the jungle gym, and actually all the way in the back, we have one lone tire swing, if you're into that. Um, so this definitely um, could vary for different ages, I would say, since we got our tire swing, we got the jungle gym, because maybe littler kids can't traverse the jungle gym, but older kids can. So I would say we could have a variety um, of different kids enjoy this space. 
And we are going to continue along. We're gonna get to our final stop in a bit. Um, we're gonna continue outside right here at Frederick Douglass Circle. So the circles and monuments that are directly adjacent to the park. So if you think about Columbus Circle, Duke Ellington Circle that we just passed and now Frederick Douglass Circle are actually all maintained by Central Park Conservancy as well. We make sure it is clean. We make sure the statues and monuments are maintained. So yeah, that's a little tidbit for you guys to know. Yes, we are going to be continuing along. Um, this is gonna be a little bit of a longer stretch because we are going straight from 109th Street all the way down to 100th Street. But we do have a couple sites to see before we get to our last stop. Yes, so this is the path directly outside of Central Park. Again, it is still Central Park grounds and the Central Park Conservancy still takes care of all these trees that line the side of the park. We got oak trees um, on the west side and on the east side, we got elm trees um, that will line the park. So it's actually very nice views and I highly recommend strolling down the streets um, to admire those trees. And we have right here, Great Hill, which is gonna be at the top of these steps and also Strangers Gate. Um, so I really like this area because I think that it kind of just looks a little ominous and also the fact that it's called Strangers Gate. Um, it kind of really does invite you into the park to see like what's on the other side. Um, and also Great Hill, which will um, be like, if you enter the drive and you're biking, it's that huge hill that you gotta bike up. Um, but we actually are having a event at Great Hill this Saturday. It is called Great Jazz at the Great Hill this Saturday. Um, there's gonna be links in the chat for you guys to check it out. So yeah, this is like an area I would say that is not really discovered or not many people go to, but I highly recommend coming out to Great Hill and seeing Strangers Gate um, whenever you have the chance and coming out to our event this Saturday, Great Jazz on the Great Hill. All right, so we are quickly approaching our final stop on our walk right here. We are at Boys Gate, yet another example of representing the populations that use the park. So that's very fun. There is a girls gate also in case you were wondering. Yes, indeed. And as we go down um, this path, there's actually a lot to see on the west side of the north, north end as well. So if we look directly across the street um, from our final playground, we actually have another one of our naturalistic water bodies. That's gonna be the pool. So um, if you have a day, you could definitely end up seeing two of our naturalistic water bodies. That's the Harlem Mirror and the pool if you um, take this walking route. So yeah, over there, we got the pool and a little bit farther down, um, we have North Woods as well. And we are quickly approaching our final stop. Um, this gives you a kind of pretty good view of the layout of this playground. I would say this is the biggest space by far out of all of our playgrounds. So I'd highly recommend this um, for the older kids. But as we can see, there are things that tell us that younger kids um, can, are welcome to play here as well. We could see these nice swings lined up. We've also got a sand pit in the middle, which is unique to this playground as we've had sand boxes in some of the other playgrounds, but we got a sand pit here. To make sure everybody's nice and safe. And we have a couple, like quite a few actually different climbing structures. So I'd say like, this is probably the most diverse of all the climbing structures we got here. We've got multiple slides and just a lot to see and do in this playground. And I remember um, when I first came to this one, I was kind of like, whoa, and my mind was blown just because of how much stuff there actually is here and how much stuff that there is here to do. All right, so this is going to be the entrance. We are at the Tar Family Playground. We could definitely see lots of people partaking in that nice sunny day that we had. It's been really hot recently, but we could definitely see some folks beating the heat in the sprinklers. We've got a little jungle gym over here and also a tire swing. 
um, tennis swings seem to be very popular in the Central Park playgrounds because I actually don't see tennis swings that much in many of the other parks around the city. So that's really fun and nice. And um, this is going to be the view from the inside of the playground. We've got this nice sand pit here and also a nice little ramp that goes across the entire the entire playground actually and we have this cute little tunnel that you can actually traverse underneath as well i can see some really great games of hide and seek going on here definitely with all the spots to hide and the spots to go around um we could definitely see that play structure in the back with the slide very fun and also the other slide over here definitely unique looking on how you have to climb up it and the way it's designed as well but definitely lots of games of tag and hide and seek i would say would be extremely um beneficial and extremely successful here in this final playground we are at yes so i definitely wanted to highlight the fact that the central park conservancy when they're restoring their playgrounds or when they're making their playgrounds they do like to preserve the trees and such so I just like how they decided to keep this tree here and actually add it into the design of the playground. I definitely appreciate that very much. And we could see um, some people taking respite in the shade actually from um, under this tree. So this is the end of our weekly walk. I hope that everyone enjoyed. I definitely encourage y'all with families or, have to, or the people that have to take care of children to try and do this little playground run. I have done it before. It's definitely, I would say, easier to do in better weathers. Just make sure you're not, make sure you're hydrated and um, you're looking at all the weathers if you're trying to attempt this, especially with kids. But if you're an adult, you can still walk this route. You just cannot go into the playgrounds. But again, there's so much to see on the north end of the park. So I highly encourage any of you guys to explore um, whenever you have the chance, as it is a place that is near and dear to my heart. Um, we've got some links in the chat talking about our events and also talking about playground partners. If you would like to help support um, the playground maintenance of the park, um, also some information about the construction that is happening, the development that's happening at Harlem Mir and Lasker Rink. So yes, more information will be down in the chat. It was so nice walking with y'all. Thank you all for coming and continuing to support the Central Park Conservancy. Truly cannot do this without y'all. Um, I'm going to stay and take some questions. If there are any, I'm going to keep the room open to answer the last few questions. But for the rest of y'all, I want you to have a great day um, and enjoy your weekend.